Uh, I think we've time for one final. We'll keep an eye on that uh, question and answer session with the Chancellor, but uh, let's just talk to our Chief Political Correspondent, Norman Smith, about what we've heard so far. I mean, it's, it's quite interesting listening to the questions from uh, Europeans who share his view. I mean, it, it's hardly a surprise because that's who would go to a speech like that this morning. What was interesting, he, he did point out that the Germans understood the need for reform better than others in the Eurozone. I mean, that's a dig at the French, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the view in British government circles is that they are slowly winning round other EU countries to their argument for reform. But Simon, I thought what was striking was it was a fairly blunt warning from Mr. Osborne. He said at one point, we can't go on like this, meaning both economically and politically, the EU just cannot carry on business as usual economically because we are falling further and further behind. He made the point that since the crash, uh, India had grown by a third, China by 70 percent. The EU had pretty much flatlined. And he had that other st telling statistics, I thought, which was that the population of the EU amounted to 7 percent of global population. The GDP amounted to 25 percent. Welfare payments amounted to 50 percent. And his argument is if the EU is not going to fall further and further behind economically, then there has to be radical reform. But here's the interesting point. He linked that to the political legitimacy of the EU. If you want people in Britain and elsewhere in Europe to be supporters of the EU, then it has got to get its act together economically. That is what the Chancellor is saying. And he had a very blunt warning saying, look, do not leave us in a situation where we in Britain have to choose between leaving and staying in an unreformed European Union. In other words, if you guys don't reform the European Union, there is a real danger that people in Britain will just think, what's the point? We're off. We're going to leave. So a fairly blunt warning, I thought, from the Chancellor. Yeah, not the straight bat you were suggesting earlier. But no mention, actually, I noticed of some of the really key difficult issues, such as this idea that the British politicians should have a veto uh, over any incoming uh, EU legislation. No mention, really, except at the end of that referendum. And lo and behold, no mention, except just tangentially, of the sort of issue du jour, namely the RBS bonus payments. He simply confirmed what we already know, which is that he is going to court to try and stop the EU imposing a cap on bonus payments. But no, you're right. He gave us a lot more grist in terms of his thinking on the absolute necessity for the EU to reform or for the danger that people will think, what's the point in being part of it? Norman, thank you. We're going to have more on the issue du jour now.